Is your dog afraid of riding in the car? Let's talk about how you can overcome some of that fear. And this is all done in steps. This can take a long way to get them to a place where they are no longer fearful of car rides. It depends on who your dog is, their personality, and their past experiences. So remember, we're doing this in steps. We're making this as easy and stress-free for your dog as possible. And this can take a couple of weeks, a couple of months, they may never get to the point that you want them to be at, but we can help them to improve with some of that car ride anxiety. So when you are bringing a dog into your house, if you're adopting a dog, if you're getting a puppy, if you are just hoping to work on the dog that you've already got, we're going to start right now as early as possible to take these small steps. The first thing I want you to do is to introduce them to the car. If they're afraid of the car, they need to see the car, experience the car, be around the car before they get into the car. A lot of times we'll think that this training has to start inside of the car. It does not. So take them out to your driveway. Put them on a leash, just let them sniff, let them figure out what's going on. The, you can even get like a longer leash. We talk about having long leashes for like park walks. We talk about doing this for the beach. Using those long leashes is helpful for letting them establish their own boundaries and test their fear points. And so you're going to take them outside. You're not going to be near your car. You're not going to hold your car keys. You're not going to turn the car on. It's just going to be silent in your driveway. And you're going to allow them to guide themselves in experiencing that car. So let them decide if they're going to walk up to it, if they're going to sniff the wheels, if they're going to kind of sniff around the body of the car, they are in charge. If they then sniff it and they decide to sniff more, great, that's a good experience. They decide to back away, okay, that's the end of the experience. We're not forcing anything. Showing them that it's a not scary situation will help to reinforce the next time that they come to see this, that it's not a scary situation. So allow them to guide this conversation. As they're walking up, as they're sniffing things, if they're doing well, you can open the car door, but don't turn the car on. Don't ask them to get into the car. Just let them see it. Oftentimes they'll come up, they'll sniff the inside of the door. They'll sniff the door handle. They'll sniff the seat, but they're not going to jump in necessarily. Do this a couple times. If they're comfortable with it, you can move forward. If they're not comfortable with a step, keep repeating that step every day every two days until they get comfortable with it. And that goes for anything that we're doing here. Repeat, 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 creating experiences where they understand you're not going to force them to move forward and that whatever they're doing is not scary. Reinforce, reinforce, reinforce until they're ready to move on to the next step. And so then you're going to allow them to jump in the car. While it's off, it's not on, just allow them to jump in. If they are a little nervous, you can sit there with them. If you have more than one person, someone can already be in the car and the other person can have them outside, open the door. And then if they choose to get in with you, now this is a positive association. It's a positive experience. And so someone's going to be in there. You can sit in there with them. You can give them treats. You can pet them. You can cuddle. You can hang out, but we're not turning the car on. So build up to the point where they can sit in the car with somebody. Now, I really like doing this with someone. I do not like car training alone. So if you have the option of having someone with you, this is going to be incredibly helpful. Whoever is in charge of this dog, the dog parent, is going to be the person in the back seat of the car moving forward and have someone else driving or whoever is the most nurturing or whoever they are, the ones that they go to when they're anxious about something, have that person in the back seat. Or you can, if it's like you and you and your person are doing this together, you can switch back and forth so that they have a positive experiences with both of you and you're just going to sit in the back seat and reassure them and engage with them now once they get to that point you can start by turning the car on but not going anywhere just let them sit there if they're fearful right back out totally fine do it in segments do it in stages and keep going until they're more comfortable with it from there now we're going to start by moving the car around you're just going to go on short car rides it's not going to be a long don't do it long go down to the end of your driveway get your mail and come back Maybe don't even get the mail. Just go down to the end of the driveway and come back. Positive experiences. We're showing them that we're not going far. A lot of times dogs become fearful of vehicles because they don't like where they're going. Sometimes they just don't like the machinery. It's big, it's loud, it's scary. Sometimes they don't like that they know if they get in the car, they're going to the vet and things are going to hurt and they're not going to like it or they're going someplace that they don't want to be because we don't travel with them too much. I, I talk a lot about making sure your dog is well-traveled if you want to travel at any point. Don't just take them on vacation once a year and expect them to behave in the car. That's not going to work for you. So you want to make sure that you are building up positive associations and showing them it doesn't have to be a scary thing. We don't have to go to a scary place. Go very short distances at first and then you're going to build it up. So down the end of the driveway, and right back and out of the vehicle. Positive association. We're seeing it's not as bad as we think. Do it over and over again, once a day. Once a day, 
down the driveway, back up. Then you can start going down the block. So down the driveway, down the street, right back. Down the driveway, down the street, right back. Then you can start going further out. So as you're building up, you're going and increasing the length of time you are going to be in the car and right back and heavily reward your dogs when they're getting out of the car as well. You want to make sure they know it's a positive experience. You did so well on this car ride. Here is a treat for you. From there, now I want you to start building it up. You can go places, especially again, if you have two people, this is why I think it's really important to have two people. You can go to a store and just park in the parking lot. The other person can go in and do the shopping and the other person can sit in the back. I've done this with my new puppies since I got them and it just works so well for car manners. Now my puppies can get in the car and they immediately go to sleep. I have no stress, no crying, no whining, no issues. Nobody's fighting. Nobody's upset. Nobody's looking out the windows barking at anybody. It is perfect peace in my car. I, my, my two puppies sometimes are not super thrilled with each other. And so if it's a bit of a chaotic day, if they're not happy with each other or they're just too rambunctious and they just want to play, if I need peace, I will take my dogs on a car ride. It doesn't matter to where because the second I put them in the car, peace. Because I train them that way and you can train your dog that way too. So now we're going to go to a store. You're going to sit in the back seat with them while somebody else drives and you're teaching them manners. You're teaching them how to behave in the back seat of the car. You've got them harnessed in, they've got the seat belts, and you're teaching these things. Now, if you're somebody who wants to get a crate for the back of your vehicle and your dog is scared of things, I do recommend that you're doing the back seat first. You're sitting them with them, teaching them that it's okay to go on these rides. Just shoving them in a crate in the back of your car isn't going to end well for anybody. So build up, have that your end goal. You're going to go to the store and they're going to park in the parking lot. They can leave the car running or they can leave the car off depending on the time of year and your temperature. And then you can teach them manners. You can teach them how to ignore people outside, how not to bark at people, how to wait, how to be patient, how to take naps, how not to get into anything in the car. And, and the nice thing about being in the backseat is you can also manage and maintain them. So if you have a dog that maybe gets a little car sick, you can make sure that they're not in a, in a space or a place where they can get car sick as much. I had one of my dogs, she would flip upside down and like lay on her back and she got sick a couple of times. And in my mind, my, my thought process was she's upside down. We took some twisty turns and that made our tummy kind of not get great. So I was able to then flip the dog upright. And even when we had those twisty turns, she no longer got sick. So I was able to teach them how to sleep in the back seat, how to ride in the car, how to go for long periods of time without whatever. And then from there, you can start to move to the front seat, have them in the back seat strapped in. You can move to the front seat if you want. I kind of like sitting in the back seat with my dogs. I like letting other people drive and that's totally fine for me, <laughs> whatever works for you. And then you can build up to putting them in a crate from there or wherever longer periods of time. And this works whether your dog is fearful or you're just training them so that they are good travelers. Just do it in small increments, showing them there's nothing scary about the car. We don't even, they don't even have to get out of the car. Like you can go places and do things without them having to get out of the vehicle. If you're going grocery shopping, if you're going to a store, one person goes in, one person stays with the dogs. They don't ever have to get out. My dogs hardly ever get out of the car. We'll be gone for hours doing our shopping. We'll do all of our errands and my dogs will not get out of the car. So they'll go on car rides, they'll hang out with us, they come home. They don't ever have to set foot outside of the car. If you want to train them how to exit and enter a car, you can do that too. You can work on that. If you want them to be able to go fun places and experience fun things, take them to the park, take them somewhere that they're going to like, go get a treat with them, go get a pup cup somewhere, take them for positive experiences. You can keep it so that, and that's, those are different levels of training too. take them somewhere, but they never get out of the car. That's going to be different. The next step is going to be take them somewhere and take them out of the vehicle and then put them back in the vehicle and go. And those can be short periods of time too. We're going to the park. We're going to the park. We're just going to walk into the edge of the park, loop around a little bit and come right back out. Short, easy, good, positive experiences and build it up to full walks in the park. You can take them to different places, let them experience different things for longer periods of time as you are growing and incrementing what you are doing with them. Now, this will not work for all dogs. Some dogs will just always be fearful of vehicles and that's okay. You do not have to force your dog to get better at these things, but you can give them the tools and equip them to be able to make better decisions and to be in situations in more healthy ways for them. So make sure that you are doing this gently with them. You are taking the adequate time for this. This is not something to be forced. It's not something that's going to happen within 
you know, even a month period, this can take several months for you to do. And you have to understand if this is something you're embarking on, it is going to be a situation where you have to put the time and effort into it. Daily short trips. Once they start to get good at it, you can space it out a little bit and go for longer periods of time. So two or three times a week, you're going to run into town for something. You can then space it out even a little bit more on those longer trips so that you're building things up, but you're spacing out how long you have to do it. But in the beginning, every single day, short trips every single day until they get more confident with it. And then you can start spacing things out and making things longer as you go. Questions on this, go ahead and let me know if you are experiencing anxiety issues or car sick issues with your dogs, please talk to your veterinarian. They're going to have really great information and helpful ways that you can be navigating some of that as well, especially if you are dealing with that anxiety or that car sickness or something else related to your dog being in the car. You want to make sure you get a medical professional's oversight on that so that they can help you in the best way possible. And they, they know your dogs. They understand where you're coming from and what's going on. And you can have those conversations with them and that's going to help you out as well. Let me know if you're going to try this out. If you have already tried this out and you're seeing results from this, we'd love to hear from you as well. And if you've got questions on how you can be training your dog for traveling, go ahead and drop those down below. We'll see in the upcoming episodes as we continue to help you navigate your best dog parent life. We'll see you in the upcoming episodes.